Um, we got a super chat here from BW. Will you be helping Bot Grinders Dream FPV Park? Uh, let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Uh, one second. Uh, wait, let me talk. Uh, that's a good point, Kickflip H. Uh, let me just say one more thing about props for the Titan XL. The best thing to do if you have a heavy quadcopter is go to a larger diameter prop. So you're going to go, if you can go to a 5.25 or even a 5.5 inch prop, you're going to, I think you're going to get a much better result than going to a high pitch prop. Uh, and Kickflip H suggests the Ethics P4 prop which I believe is an even higher, a, a larger diameter. So I don't know if the XL5 frame will handle a 5.5 or a 5.25, but that would be another direction to go. Um, okay. Check, check. Uh, let's talk about this. Bachrinder. Bachrinder wants to build, he's talked about this for years. He wants to build an FPV drone park. If you've been inspired by some of the flying that you've seen over at uh, uh, at, at Portland, uh, what's his last name, Eric? Uh, if you've been inspired by some of the flying you've seen over at the Portland Drone Park, uh, then the idea here is that this one will be open to the public. Now these are, oh, Eric Sackoff, that's his name. Uh, these are... are Eric's property is his private property, and you basically need an invitation to go fly there, uh, which I, you know, absolutely. The man, it's his home. Uh, he has no obligation to uh, do anything there that he doesn't want to do. But Bachrinder's idea is that he wants to buy some property and uh, build a public access drone park there. Uh, he wants it to have camping. His idea is that it'll have a camping area, so you could travel to it. You could camp there, have obstacles, have a little crawler, RC crawler park. Uh, he's got a lot of ideas. And he has started a GoFundMe. You can go to fpvpark.com, and it redirects to his fundraiser. Uh, trying to raise $70,000 to buy property and start building this drone park. Um... And the question is, am I going to support this? So the short answer is yes. I haven't donated yet. Uh, I will be donating. Uh, I don't know how much. I haven't decided how much I'm going to donate yet. Um, he's at $13,000 out of $70,000. Now, one of the things Bachrinder has said, and kudos to him for saying this, because certainly a concern that somebody might have is that they would donate money. For one reason or another, this would fall through. Right. There's a lot. And, and that's not intended as a, a like a, a slam on Bachrinder or anything. But there are just a lot of ways that a project like this could not work out. That's a fact. Bachrinder has said that if they're unable to get the property for some reason, if anything goes wrong and they can't fall through, they'll be re refunding all the donations. Uh, I think that it makes a lot of sense that you would sort of let uh, let GoFundMe hold those donations until such a time as you had lined up the property you were going to buy at the very least. And then if you can't do that within a certain amount of time, you give the money back. That's uh, an extremely ethical thing to do. And I, I, uh, I, I felt a lot of uh, relief and satisfaction when I heard him say that, that he had anticipated. Because I've seen things like this happen before. Uh, I'll hold myself out as an example. Um, that I did a GoFundMe for my battery test machine years ago. A lot of you probably don't remember this. I raised uh, $4,000 to do to buy a battery test machine. I was doing battery testing using an extremely simple, unscientific method. And this battery test machine would let me do more rigorous testing. I bought the test, the machine. I did some testing. Uh, I did deliver uh, for a little while. Uh, but I found it very difficult to source batteries. Um, for a little while, uh, like at one time, race day quads 
gave me one of every Race Day Quads branded battery that they sell, like 40 packs. And I tested them all. That was fantastic. But it's hard to find. Uh, Go Get FPV did a similar thing. Uh, it's hard to find companies who will do that, though. And it's extremely expensive to buy all the batteries you want to test yourself. And so I, f I felt like I didn't, although I did deliver somewhat, I felt like I under delivered on my on my promises. And of course, I had already bought the machine, so there was no refunding the money. I still have the machine and I still am thinking about ways to continue to produce content with it. But that's an example of a GoFundMe where if you donated, you might think that you didn't get what you had hoped out of it. And that's always a risk. So uh, at the very least saying, if we don't buy the property, we're giving the money back. That makes a lot of, that's, that's really good. Um, uh, this is, uh, I, I will, I will be donating and I will be promoting this and I would like to see it pan out. I will say, uh, I, I, uh, I can immediately see all of the ways that this could fall apart. And on some level, that's because I am more of a skeptic than I am a sort of pie in the uh, head in the clouds dreamer and and I, I I'm not saying that's a good thing it just is what it is I um I've been involved in uh large organizations that had assets so uh, uh I was a uh, I was on the board of directors for alchemy the Georgia regional burning man event uh I was one of the founding members for, for the first two years. I was the security team lead. And then I believe it was in the third year I became a board member and was a board member for several years. And so that's one example of a time when I was a member of an organization with substantial assets uh, because, you know, they sell tickets, they buy, they didn't have like a shitload, they didn't have a million dollars. But they had they had tens of thousands of dollars going through their coffers, and they could buy things and they could rent things, and it it was it was extremely uh, challenging, and uh, it was a lot of responsibility to find fair ways to use those assets to benefit the organization and to avoid situations where there was a perception in the community that the assets were being misappropriated or used in a way that the community didn't. Because there's always people out there who are going to be like, oh, I don't like what you're doing. And it's it's really tricky to manage that. And it's one thing if you put on a, an event once a year and you sell tickets, right? And then people can buy the ticket and they can go to the event and maybe they had a good time, maybe they don't. But it's another thing if you're creating a uh, like a, a destination that will always exist. Because at the end of the day, the assets that Alchemy owned were things like a storage unit, a box truck. But if you if you own a property, then there's going to be a question of who can come here when. And how can they use it? And if they want to do something there, who says whether they can or can't do it? And these questions are easy to hand wave at the beginning when there is nothing. When there is nothing but a dream, you put out the call and you say, let's all do a thing as a, as a community. It'll be great. And a whole bunch of people come and they follow your dream. And eventually... Eventually, somebody says, hey, I want to do this thing. And somebody else says, I don't want you to do that thing. And then there has to be a procedure. Somebody says, I want to spend this money on this thing. And somebody else says, I don't think we should spend that money. I think we should spend that money on something else. And there has to be a way to resolve that. And if you don't have that going in, then it, it could be really problematic. People can really end up feeling like they got screwed over so the way it sits right now as far as i can tell is bach render has the money he will well he will get the money and he will decide what to do with it 
And as long as he's the only one who's doing all the work, that's fine. But as soon as you start having volunteers help you, as soon as you start accepting donations for things, then it gets really complicated. And I that to me seems like the biggest risk of a situation like this. When Bachrender said months ago, I'm I'm gonna I wanna build a drone park, it's gonna be open to the community, it's gonna be great for everybody to use, everybody can contribute, and I was like, ooh, I've seen this before. I've seen this before. I've seen so many situations where that language ends up meaning that a whole bunch of people do a whole bunch of work for free and and then the the guy who owns the property keeps all that labor and benefits from it and everybody else is like cool that was great we contributed to the community and don't actually get the equity that they deserve and sometimes they're okay with it and sometimes they feel like they got effed over the more i talk about this the more uh i i wonder whether 3 years from now people are people might say things about Bachrinder that Bachrinder and other people said about Rotor Riot. Because there's some parallels. There's potential parallels depending on how Bachrinder navigates these waters. Maybe he will do, maybe he also has had these same experiences and is anticipating these same problems and knows exactly how to deal with it. I'm not saying that these problems can't be solved. But I'm saying that if you go into this without knowing that this is going to happen, then it'll bite you. So, whenever, here's, I'm going to finish up this topic. I've sort of been rambling for a while. I haven't been reading comments. I don't know if you guys are enjoying this. I think we're going to wrap it up. I would say this. I have seen so many times in my life, someone say, I've got this great idea for a project. Everyone give me money and labor and volunteer but at the end of the day, I'm going to own the building. I'm going to own the property. I'm going to own the, the car that we all worked on. And you guys are going to get a community that you can. And then a whole bunch of people get screwed over and one or one person or a few person benefit. So whenever somebody says, we're going to make a community, come contribute and volunteer so you could be part of the community. I go, okay, but am I going to get paid for my work or are you just going to keep all my work and I'm going to go and, and I'm going to have that nice, satisfied community feeling and I worry. And that's, you know, uh, frankly, a lot of people, I, I think of that, I think of that, I think of that at everything. Like, like when multi, multi GP has volunteers who help run the flight line, Rotor Riot Rampage has volunteers who help run the flight line. Anytime an organization that is making money has volunteers helping them make money and not getting equity in exchange, on some level I go, should we be doing this? And a lot of people are okay with it. A lot of people are okay with it. And if they're okay with it, well, who am I to say? Uh, but, uh, that's my first thought. Okay. Okay. Anyway. Uh, let's, uh, let's continue with the stream. Mad Max FPV says the only way bot grinder can let people down is not returning the money if he fails to raise enough. I disagree. And again, I don't want to focus on all the ways this could fail, but that's kind of where my mind goes. Let's say Bachrinder raises the money, buys the property. Now Bachrinder owns a piece of property. Now, next up, we got to build a we got to build an FPV park. Oh, shit, it turns out that also costs a lot of money. Go ask Eric Sakoff how much money he has. In his, uh, I, he gave a number, er, Eric Sackhoff, the builder of the Portland Drone Park. What do you mean? It's just some lumber in the trees. He he quoted a number in the tens of thousands of dollars for how much he had invested in those obstacles. Never mind that he also owns an excavator and other heavy machinery that he uses to put the stuff up. So Bachrinder could buy the property 
be unable to deliver on the promise of the park. I mean, there's a lot of ways this could go wrong. There's a lot of ways it could go right. I'm focusing too much on the money. Sorry, Drone Shots Berlin. I, 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 I respectfully say that I'm focusing, that everybody else doesn't focus enough on the money. Uh, I, 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 I am annoyed at how, how often, uh, I, I think everybody else doesn't focus enough on the money. When somebody asks you for $70,000, it is 1000% appropriate to focus on the money. <clears throat> Maybe it can, it's a lot of, anyway. How do you know Bachrender is going to own it? Good question. Good question. Uh, he could put it in a trust and give it to the community. What would that even mean, Kohib? What would it mean to give it to the community? The community is not a legal entity. If you if you were to put the property in a trust, there has to be some way of resolving conflicts about the property. There has to be an entity, whether that's an individual, whether that is a board of directors, there has to be an entity that makes decisions via a defined process. Let's 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 be really simple. Let's say Bach, let's say something Bachrinder buys the property and puts it in a trust. And now someone says, "I want to buy this property for 10 million dollars." And someone has to say, "Yes or no, will we sell this property for 10 million dollars?" If the money is if the property is in a trust and it belongs to the community, who signs on the dotted line when they sell that property for $10 million? And then how is that $10 million distributed and to whom? Some There has to be an answer to that question. You can't just give property to the community. That's not a legal, that's not a concept that exists. And before you accuse me of being too focused on the money, that's just an example. Anytime there is a potential conflict over what to do? Should we cut down these trees? Yes or no? Well, as long as we all agree that it's okay to cut those trees down, it doesn't matter. But as soon as a person who feels they are a stakeholder disagrees about what to do, if you don't have a defined procedure, even just a vague one, for how to, how to resolve that conflict, you're going to end up with people feeling like they got screwed over. So you could have donors be shareholders in a 501c3 nonprofit and you could have voting shares. That would be a thing. I'm not saying that's the right thing, but that would be a thing you could do. But but the problem is that very often nobody thinks about this stuff. They just dive in and it ends up with, it, I, and I'm talking from personal experience, it ends up with one guy happening to be the guy whose name is on the deed or whose name is on the title of the truck. And then when the organization falls apart because nobody thought about this stuff beforehand, it just so happens that that guy keeps the truck. Oh, and also, oh, anyway, enough about that. Enough, enough about that. We should be thinking about these things is my point. Okay, mo moving on, moving on. We're going to move on. I'm going to get some super chats. we got a bunch of super chats. Uh, SJ, thank you for a $2 super chat. How to store multiple drones with binds to the Tango 2? That doesn't make any sense, SJ. I'm missing some part of your question. Because you can bind essentially as many drones as you want with a Tango 2. So I don't understand why you are having a problem doing that. If I remember correctly, what Alchemy did was... I can't remember. It's been years since I talked, since I thought about this. We said that the organization could be disbanded via a like there was a board of directors and then there was a way the community was defined as anyone who had bought an alchemy ticket in the last so many years. And then those people had votes. And if you could document that you had bought a ticket, you had a vote. 
And then you, you, there was a procedure by which anyone who had bought a ticket in the last number of years could raise like a referendum, including disbanding the organization and dispersing the the assets. Hmm. So, anyway. Um, SJ, I'm going to ping you. What are the steps to, what are the steps, SJ, are you asking how to bind a Crossfire drone? I mean, binding multiple drones is the same as binding one drone. You just bind one and then power it down and bind the next one. And then whichever one powers up is going to be the one that, uh, that is bound. I'll keep watching your, for your question, SJ. Here's a here's another reason why the the legal ownership of the property is important. Uh, if a drone hits somebody in the head and they lose an eye, who is going to whose name is going to be on the lawsuit? The pilot, clearly. The landowner, probably. Is the community going to get sued for that? No. There has to, uh, there has to be somebody. Uh, at Alchemy, uh, one year at Alchemy, one of the attendees uh, caught himself on fire. The best, the best, the best uh, explanation for what happened was that he was inebriated in some way, that he bumped into a tiki torch and was wearing synthetic fabric that his clothes lit on fire and he uh he ended up being airlifted out and uh eventually died and that was the most serious thing that happened in all the time that I was on the board of directors and after after you know everyone rendered medical attention Everyone got the ambulance in as fast as possible. Everyone made room for the helicopter to land. Everyone put 100% of their efforts towards taking care of this person. And then after he was gone, the very next thing we did was we went to the stack of waivers and we started looking through the stack of waivers to find his waiver because we were like, we are going to get sued. <laughs> we are going to get sued. And I was on the board of directors for that event. I was like, I'm going to get sued for this guy's injury or death. Uh, it, thankfully, it didn't come to that. Uh, it was, well, I, we don't need to go into more details. But uh, that was, you know, it's it's one thing to go, oh, we're going to have a great community project and we're all going to get together. And we're going to do this thing. It's going to be so cool. And then, uh, then you start wishing you had your ducks in a row at some point. Anyway, um, that was a hell of a thing. Get it, Shark. Thank you for a $5 super chat. Uh, your pin IO video saved me from having to break a DVR board in a fit of rage. Just want to say thanks. Thank you, Get it, Shark. Uh, Stevens Box, thank you for a $20 super chat. Thanks for your help via email. Is there a website where I can learn about FPV, find the best FPV products, and check if they're in stock? Godspeed. Stevens Box, thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity to plug my website. SearchFPV.com is the one we're plugging right now. It is a multi-store FPV search engine. Uh, we are continually adding more stores. Uh, um, keep adding stores. You can pick the region that you want to search or you can select all. And you can select in-stock only items and it'll search these items for you. Titan XL5 we were talking about earlier. Let's see who has the Titan XL... XL5 in stock. Well, it takes a minute to search this many stores, but... Mm. Oh. Mm. Nope, not many people... Have... Oh, there's the XL5 frame in stock. Uh, that's... Uh... That's what, that's what search FPV is. Thank you for the opportunity. 
I will say, I guess I'm going to talk about this a tiny bit more. I will say that there needs to be a balance. There needs to be a balance because at the end of the day, you would never do something like this if you started out thinking about all this bullshit. The beginning of an event needs to be one guy with a dream saying, wouldn't it be amazing if, and a whole bunch of other people who don't think about the ways it could all go wrong saying, yes, let's do it. And that's where you get the momentum to get over the hump. But then like, once you're over that initial hump, you got to start thinking about these things sooner rather than later, in my opinion, or people. And, 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 and honestly, it is exactly because people don't think about these things that you end up in situations like Rotor Riot sometimes was accused of. Now, I, I, I'm, I, I shouldn't take that analogy too far because I, I don't think I don't think that Chad Capper, who founded Rotor Riot, is a kind of head in the clouds dreamer who didn't know the, 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 that these problems might come up. I think Chad Capper had enough experience that you could you could just if you were to say, no, 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 he should have seen this coming. I think that would be a fair claim. But the exact kind of arguments that I worked and I wasn't paid and somebody else benefited from my work and I was taken advantage of, that exact situation is exactly where you end up if you say, everyone, let's make this great thing. Don't worry about Let's just all do it. It's going to be so fun and everything will be fine. We're not going to write down how the money's going to go or anything like that. It's just going to be great. That's exactly where you end up. I don't know how much of that is why people like Steel and Final Glide ended up feeling like they got taken advantage of. But I wouldn't. It's plausible that that's what happened. Uh, the, the, the comment I just made going back to the the discussion about community projects is uh, I said the, the flip side of my argument, which is that you can't take advantage of volunteers, can't take their labor and not compensate them with equity. Uh, the flip side is that in the beginning, there usually isn't any money. And so you literally just don't have enough money to actually pay volunteers a fair wage. So the only way to get off the ground is to take free labor from people who are happy to give it. And at the end of the day, there has to be somebody whose name is on the lease in case you, 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 that somebody needs to get sued. And that guy ends up being the one who owns the assets because he's just the one whose name is on the lease. And on some level, taking the risk of being the one who gets sued might be a fair trade-off for being the one who also legally owns the assets. So it's tough. It's tough. Hmm. Lots of projects operate without equity. That's true, Mad Max. Lots of projects also unfairly take advantage of the labor of volunteers who undervalue their own labor. Uh, there is a... Uh, I guess I care a lot about this topic more than more than talking about FPV, I guess. There's a, uh, a children's... Uh, uh, there's What is even... like? It's like a flea market. A whole bunch of vendors show up with like children's clothes and toys and so forth. And they all go into this like giant warehouse and they put out their tables. And uh, it, it's here in Knoxville. And uh, they have volunteers. And these volunteers do things like run the registers. They, they, they're employees. They have volunteers who act as employees. They are unpaid. And in exchange for working an eight-hour shift, a scheduled eight-hour shift, these volunteers get early access to the sale so they can buy the best stuff off the tables first. So what's, in my opinion, this violates labor laws. That this, this company is taking is they are taking they're violating labor laws they're getting eight hours of work for which they are required to pay a minimum wage and in exchange they are not paying these people they are giving them an intangible benefit that does not have the fair value of their work the fact that these people are willing to do it 
doesn't change the fact that they're abusing, they're, they're violating the law. And it's not that I'm like a sucker for the law. Never violate the law, children. It's that I hate to see people working and and be not getting fair value for their work. That happens so much in the United States. That people undervalue their own labor and are willing to give their labor away to some because it's not like this this children's yard sale flea market is a small company. They make a shitload of money. They need to pay their employees and not call them volunteers and take their way, take their work and not compensate for them for it. So, yeah, a lot of organizations work without equity. A lot of organizations abuse their employees and take their money without giving them fair compensation. And that's not okay. You can't turn an employee into a volunteer simply by going, wink, you're a volunteer, right? There are legal definitions for what wages, when wages are required. Slaughter Bartfast points out there are a lot of model airplane fields and clubs around. This isn't new. Bachrinder could model the park that way. 100%. The one of the smartest things you can do if you are starting an organization like this is talk to other people who have done it and model yourself after them. That's a thousand percent true. So if you look at model flying fields, Usually, there's an LLC, there's a board of directors, they'll have board meetings, there's a procedure for collecting dues, there's a procedure, and, and, as long, and that, that would be great. And then, at least you know what you're getting into. Now, a lot of people are, you know, some people, I, I, at every flying field I know, some of the members of the flying field are less than perfectly happy with the way the flying field is run. And that's sort of going to be inevitable. But at least if you have a set of rules and a set of guidelines, then you know what you're getting into. You pay your dues and, and you do what you're going to do. Um, that would be fantastic if it was set up that way. I, I, I would have liked to hear more about that, I guess is what I'm saying. I would have liked to hear more about that before. Before I give somebody $70,000, I would like to hear more about how the organization will be structured. I would like to at least know that you thought about that. Whenever I see somebody saying, give me a lot of money and give me a lot of volunteer labor, and it's going to be great because we're going to have a community. I go, uh-huh. Okay, maybe. Maybe. I mean, I've done that. I do that shit sometimes. Don't get me wrong. But on some level, I'm also like, this is going to go badly. 